Jesus bless this message in Jesus name I pray. Amen. All right, I want to thank those of you who've been praying for me and everything. My mouth is still sore, but it's going to be about another week or so. I'm going to be all right, okay? So let's just get through this. We have movie night tonight on Google Meets. You can find all that information out on JesusDoers.com. You can also go there and see those of you that come here and learn all the time um, that actually financially help us back. Go there and see part of what you're helping with with Africa. That's what God told us to do here. We're the only ministry doing that for that part of Africa. We're the only ones. There's really not that many of y'all actually doing it, but a couple of y'all are. So thank you for honoring God's word and helping. We are Jesus doers and helping us to do also what we're doing in Africa. All right. Thank you for that. Um, now we're going to go talk about wisdom, wisdom, which most people don't have, but it's available for you. It's available. Wisdom is the ability to make godly choices because we are to make those choices. You are to make those godly choices. It's called fear of the Lord. It's called reverence. Fear of the Lord isn't fear that you're scared to death. It's called reverence to God in everything. The book of Proverbs now, it's, the book of Proverbs is that book of wisdom. All right. It's look at the heart is central. The heart, what comes from your heart is central. Your motives, your thoughts, all that stuff comes from how you really feel in your heart. Read it. In, oh, this is Proverbs 27, 19. And how humans delude themselves. Humans. There's some verses right there. Proverbs 12, 15, 28, 26, 14, 12. Humans delude themselves. There is a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. See, things seem right to us here. But in the end, and there is an end to you. It will lead you to death, which is what? Separation from God. Humans are inherit, inherently foolish. We inherit it, foolishness. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. But the rod of discipline will drive it from him. Okay. And we are God's creation. So this, this book of Proverbs is going to break a lot of stuff down to you. Proverb is a guide to godly living. That's what it is. It's important you study that book. Don't just read it. Study Proverbs. You got the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's a proverb. You know, we've all heard it or used it at some point. It expresses popular wisdom that everybody can understand what that sent, what I just said there. An apple a day keeps a doctor away. People understand that following that advice will, will help you live a better life. An apple a day keeps a doctor away. Everybody understands what that means. Eat better. Be better to your body. Treat your body better. Eat better food. And you won't be sick as much as we are putting junk in our bodies. It's a proverb. We understand it's a word of wisdom. Okay, so Proverbs are short, memorable sayings that generalize on human experience to communicate an experiential truth. Okay, although we all recognize that these bits of wisdom are helpful, they're not universal or always applicable. Okay, so while generally an apple a day keeps a doctor away, we all know that some serious illnesses require immediate medical attention, right? In other words, we all recognize the limits of popular wisdom, okay? So, the fear of the Lord. Let's talk about the fear of the Lord. The Bible's very clear that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's in Proverbs 1-7. In the Bible, the starting point of wisdom and its end goal are all embracing relationship is an all embracing relationship with God the Lord of the covenant right the fear of the Lord is not a sense of terror but it's a sense of reverence if you got reverence for God and you're and you're obeying him then you have the proper fear of the Lord if you think you got reverence for God and you're not obeying him you have no reverence Okay, you have it. 
It's deep. It's a deep sense of who God is and who we are in relation to him. It is a deep understanding that God is the creator. God is the sustainer, the savior, the judge, and the owner of the whole entire universe. Who would not fear or reverence that? Who would not reverence him? Okay, now some of the ways Proverbs will break it down to you, that we reverence God. All of it's in Proverbs. I'm going to turn this light off over here. All of this and more. Well, I'm not going to turn it off. Is in the book of Proverbs. So take some time in your studies and go study that book. It's going to, the description of a wise, wise person. Okay, wisdom is not something that's easily taught. Okay, as with many important things, it's easier to show what a wise person looks like than to try to describe wisdom, okay? But wise people, wise people are recognized by their character, right? They're, they're, they're righteous, loyal, humble. This is what we are to be, to be Christ-like, y'all. We, we, and God will grow us into this as we start obeying the Lord in everything. They're righteous, they're loyal, they're humble, teachable, self-controlled. They're forgiving, they're thoughtful, they're honest, they don't boast, they don't go around blabbing out secrets. You know, they're peaceful people. So the Holy Spirit wants to come in and change your character to make your character more Christ-like. And the Proverbs breaks it down for you. Um, a wise person is, their speech will change. Their speech. You're going to understand as you grow in the Lord that your words have power. Do you hear me? The, everything that comes out your mouth has power. You're made in God's image. We have some of God's attributes, some of his characteristics. Okay? God spoke everything into existence spoke it when he cast when jesus was here on this earth as a human he cast out demons he didn't put his hand on them he spoke power and okay so your words what you speak over yourself over your family has power proverbs uh 12 18 reckless words pierce like a sword but the tongue of the wise brings healing so the Holy Spirit's going to help you change your speech. All right? It's going to talk about your relationships with your wife, with your children, your relationships with other people. So relationships with others. What's the second greatest commandment, y'all? What's the first greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, body, mind, everything you've got. What's the second greatest commandment? Love other people. Like you would love yourself. Because people really like to love themselves. And forget about other people, don't they? Yes, they do it every day. But we, this is going to help you understand your relationship with others. To choose kind friends. Be the kind of person that values your friends. And you're loyal to, to your friends. You behave fairly and justless. Just, I can't even talk right. You behave fair and just with everybody. You're considerate and you live in peace. All that's in the book of Proverbs. It's going to talk to you about what God wants you to do with your possessions. Now, this is the part right here. Everybody's willing to follow God, boy, until you come to this part. And then Satan rears his ugly two-horned head, his old seven-headed dragon stuff. He'll raise his head right here, right here. But let's see what God's word tells you. God will teach you, and you are to grow into this person out of reverence to God. It's going to talk to you about your possessions. You're going to recognize the proper value of money. Okay? Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath because the day of wrath is coming, y'all, and it's approaching quick. And all of you that skip out on helping the ministries that are helping you, that skip out on giving God what is his, helping your teachers and preachers, helping uh, to us to do what we're doing, like in Africa, for example. Those of you that skip out on that, uh, all, all your holdbacks are worthless in the day of God's wrath. Ain't worth nothing. Wrath is worthless. I mean, wealth is worthless in the day of wrath. 
but righteousness delivers you from death. Do you understand? Giving God what belongs to him, that already belongs to him, saves you from death. Proverbs 11, 4. Do you understand that your wisdom, knowing God and following God, is better than your wealth, than your riches? Did you know that? Because your riches are going to burn up, y'all. You ain't nothing going to go with you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Understand that. Better treat God and his people right while you're here. Do right with what God trusted you with, what he gave you. The Lord giveth y'all and the Lord taketh. So wisdom is better than riches, okay? How much better to get wisdom than gold? To choose understanding rather than to choose silver. Proverbs 16, 16. It's going to tell you in Proverbs to this, this wise person who really loves God, honors God with uh, possessions and recognizes that blessings come from God. What you have, people like to think, well, I work for what I got. And God didn't give this to me. I work hard for it. It's mine. Who gave you the ability to work for it? Who did that? Who did that? It won't you. It was God. Who made it able so you could go out and work and get that? It won't you. It was God. You have everything you have. Because of God, <clears throat> because of God, and you better give that glory to God. You better give that glory to God. <clears throat> Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. <clears throat> Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim with new wine. Now, back in those days, they didn't have the kind of money we have. They had crops, okay? But you roll with the time. The word, I, the Lord God, do not change. It doesn't change. You still help God's people, God's kingdom. That never stops, okay? So honor God, y'all. It's going to tell you to, rec it's going to, uh, Proverbs is going to help you recognize that foolish behavior. You having foolish behavior leads to poverty, as do injustice and oppression. He who, live, he who loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and oil will never be rich. Proverbs 21, 17. He who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth. And he who gives gifts to the rich both come to poverty. 22, 16. So that verse, what that means? Like here, we are Jesus doers. We're here teaching y'all every single day. And you're here learning and growing. How many of you actually give anything to help this ministry? Mostly none of you. A couple of you. How many of you? You come and get. How many of you are giving in return? Back to what God is doing for you. Not many. Um, and what? how many of you actually help us do what we're doing in Africa? Helping that homeless community. We're all they have. How many of you do that? Not not many of you. Not many. A few. But how many of you will go and, and uh, go to a concert, a rock concert, a country concert, a rap concert, and give money to the already rich while the poor is over here suffer? Why, how many of you? This is what he's talking about. Listen, y'all. He who loves pleasure will become poor. Better believe it's God's word. Whoever loves wine and oil, he will never be rich. 21, 17. Now, he who oppresses the poor, like Africa, he who oppresses the poor to increase your own wealth. Well, I need this. This I, I need. I need, right? That's what he means. And he who gives gifts to the rich, you both will come to poverty. 22, 16. All right, a wise person's going to tell you is generous. They're generous with their possessions. The righteous care about justice for the poor. Did you hear the Bible? The righteous. You think you're righteous? The righteous care about justice for the poor. But the wicked have no such concern. 29.7, which side of the fence are you on, the righteous or the wicked? Because the Bible's straight up, y'all. Straight up. 
And it's also talking about you be kind to animals. You know how many people hurt helpless, defenseless animals? A righteous man cares for the needs of his animal. But the kindest uh, acts of the wicked are cruel. That's 12.10. Okay, it's going to talk about you got kingship. You should have kingship. In the world of ancient Israel, the king represented the people, right? We are to we are meant to, to model attitudes, behaviors, and characters of, of of Christ. You understand? We are to model his character. We do, me and you. We model his character. Do you understand? That's what we learn on a daily basis to model his character. Okay? So the book of Proverbs is a great book. You want to talk about fruits of the Spirit, even though that's in Galatians chapter 5. This is also part of the fruits of your spirit. Break it down. Study it. Dissect the book of Proverbs, y'all. Break it down. Because I see a lot of talk. A lot of talk. I don't hardly see any action, y'all. A little bit. But that's the way Jesus said there's a wide road to destruction of self-deceived people. There's a very narrow road, y'all. People actually going to heaven that actually love God, understand the Bible. There's a narrow road here that goes to heaven. Jesus said only very few people are actually on it. He didn't say many. He said very few people are on that road. Few. But there's a wide road that goes straight to hell. And there's a lot of people on it. And all these people, this is the problem, call themselves a Christian. Yes, I love the Lord. Do you honor God? No. No, I don't. No, I don't. And I'm not going to. And I'm not going to. You know, and, but, but a few people do. These people go to most of the, the Bible says many are on this road. But he said few are on this road. You get to choose your road. You understand? You get to choose your road. Choose wisely, y'all. Choose wisely. All right? In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Thank those of you that are helping our ministry. Thank you that are coming here and learning all the time, coming to the classes and all that, that's actually doing what God told you to do. Thank you so much. And the rest of you, God bless you. If you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you. And uh, get to know God. Start obeying him, y'all, in everything, in everything. Don't let one thing slip past you. Just takes one sin, y'all, one, one willful sin. Be walking on this road, you understand? One willful sin. Don't sin, y'all. You choose. You get to choose it. Choose it. Choose life. Choose life. Reverence God. All right, God bless you all. Anything else you need in the description. In Jesus' name, God bless.